All right. We are starting reading a class. For my virtual friends, I gave you this sheet. This is what we are going to be discussing. Daedalus and Icarus. Interesting names. Has anyone heard of these names before? These are characters in Greek mythology. Does anyone know what mythology is? It is a genre of literature. So we are talking about the ancient Greeks. They had a very interesting, well, we call it mythology. They had they had belief system and gods and how the world ran was very, very interesting. So what is mythology? Is it real or is it not real? Cool. Not real. It's not real. They are make-believe stories. Did anyone else have a, when they, yes, Sam? Can I no, we should have done that before. So is it the, a traditional story, especially one concerning the early history of a people, in this case, Greek, the Greek mythology or explaining some natural or social phenomena, typically involving supernatural beings or events. So the Greek mythology is a amazing cast of characters with a lot of special powers. Their whole God system was, I need everybody to track. Was there, has anyone ever heard of Percy Jackson? That is a perfect example of the merge of Greek mythology to modern history, or mo the modern world. Lots of interesting characters, lots of interesting powers, all make-believe, but the Gre ancient Greeks, that was their belief system. Fortunately, they were... Um, taught about Jesus and they're Christians. But before, way before Jesus, this whole Greek pantheon of gods and characters were predominant. And it's interesting. And they always have a very strong moral. Who remembers what a moral is? Jonathan. Like the meaning or the lesson of the story. Meaning or lesson. So I want you to follow along with me and I want you to listen very closely to the story. I want everybody looking at their story, sitting up straight and following along. All right, Daedalus and Icarus. Once upon a time in ancient Greece, there was an architect by the name of Daedalus. What is an architect? Cool. That's right, he planned buildings. When the king of the island of Crete, which is a Greek island that still exists today, entrusted Daedalus with the job of designing and building his new palace. Daedalus was overjoyed and took his son Icarus to accompany him on the new project. He worked long and hard. The palace he built was nothing short of spectacular. The gardens were as beautiful as a fairy tale. The living quarters were fit for a king. And there was an underground labyrinth that was supposed to be secret. What is a labyrinth? An underground labyrinth. Does anybody know what that means? Grayson. No, but you're right in underground. But it's not necessarily a room. It's huge. Um, Luke. No. Jonathan. No. Helen. Owen. Huh? Nope. So a labyrinth, 
Who has ever been, I guess the only thing that I could compare to in our time is a corn maze. Who's been to a corn maze? So a, a labyrinth is a giant maze. And in Greek mythology, there were usually monsters in there. And there were secret passages. There were dangers that would lurk around each corner. And you had to find your way out. So a labyrinth is a ginormous maze. So this king has a labyrinth underneath his palace, which is interesting. Wonder why you would need a labyrinth. The king, okay, so then he could not allow da Daedalus and wait, wait. I missed the page. Underground labyrinth. Okay, here we go that was supposed to be kept secret. The king inspected the finished project and loved it. Daedalus thought his job was through and started packing his and Icarus's belongings for the long trip home. The king, however, had another plan. If he was to ensure the labyrinth would be kept a secret, then he could not allow Daedalus and Icarus to leave. Trying to be nice, the king provided the architect and Icarus luxurious living space in the highest tower of the new palace, fine food, even servants. None of it, however, could replace their freedom or their home. Wise and patient, Daedalus started feeding wild birds on the windowsill. Every day as he ate, the birds ate, they shed a few feathers. After a while, Daedalus had collected a lot of feathers and some leftover wax candles. As part of an escape plan, Daedalus fashioned, fashioned two sets of wings with the feathers set in wax. All right, two things we need to keep in mind. So the feathers are from birds. What is he putting to attach the feathers to the wings? Grace it. Wax. Keep that in mind. Doning one, he gave the other set to his son, Icarus, but warned him, don't fly too low or the sea will soak your feathers. Don't fly too high or the sun will melt your wax. So two things to remember. Together they flew from their prison up into the air. Icarus beat his arms and soared after his father. The sea shimmered below him to fly, he thought, to soar with the gulls. He loved it. Icarus grew so excited by his new power, he flew upward toward the clouds, forgetting his father's warning. What was his warning? Olivia. Yes, suddenly a feather loosened from his artificial wings. Then another fell off. He stared at them. The wax was melting fast. His wings were coming apart. He had flown too close to the sun. At this very moment, Daedalus turned and could do nothing but watch helplessly as the wax melted from Icarus's wings and Icarus plummeted to the unforgiving sea. Dun, dun, dun. A happy ending, friends. However, did, what was the warning that Daedalus gave Icarus? He told him not to fly too high because why? Cole. The, um, and not too low because, or don't get them wet in the sea because, Jonathan. Because the sea will soak your wings. That's right, and the wings won't work. The feathers will be, will get wet and they won't work as well. So, what is the first thing Icarus does? Does he listen to his father? No. no. So, a lot of it was he was excited. I would be excited if I were able to fly. That would be super awesome. So, I think what happened is Icarus got overly excited and then he overdid it and got himself into grave danger. So, consequences and implications. What is a consequence? What is a consequence? Owen. Right. 
A consequence can either be a positive thing or a negative thing. Would you say Icarus's, or, uh, yeah, Icarus's consequence was good or bad? Was it a good consequence or a disastrous one? Luke? Disastrous. Yes. So what, how can you take this myth and apply it to your own life? Are consequences applicable in your own life? In our world today, or is it only applicable to the Greek mythology from ancient Greece? Let's wake up, friends. Uh, what is something that you could apply to your own life about consequences? Helen. So your consequence, if you don't take them out, is you get to play with them? Mm -hmm. Well, like I, have to, I have to watch them for the rest of the day. Oh, so he's, he's your responsibility for the whole day. So that initially sounds like fun until you want to go to a friend's house and go or go play, and then you're like, oh, I have to take care of Roger. So it's a very clever consequence disguised as fun, but you have responsibility. Very good. What's another consequence that you could apply to your own life or the world for that matter? When you read something like this, the consequences are very sober, but how can you apply this a consequence to your own life or to the world? Uh, Cole. Um. That is a, that I'm sure is a very horrible consequence if you can't play your video games or watch TV. So that, but that is a consequence that's very applicable. I'm sure a lot of you have had something that means a lot to you taken away for a period of time because of a consequence that you didn't do what you were told to do. Grayson. Um, so I, um, maybe if I, like, um, like, um, Then you don't. And, and then I, and then um, and then no more snacks until dinner. So then you're starving. Yep, that's a good consequence. If you don't eat when you're supposed to eat, then you don't get to have something before the next meal. That is a definite consequence that's very applicable. Luke. Another video game consequence. Jonathan. consequence. Jeremiah. Um, um, Miss Pam, I, um, if my parents ask me, uh, what time do you need my brother because my dad is lazy at, or my parents are taking photos to take baby out really, really early in the morning, and then we forgot to do it, but then did it, but then when we got back, it, it was kind of fun. Oh, because you didn't listen, right? Yeah, Consequence. We have a woods right, we live right, right next to a woods, so we were caged in the woods by the afternoon. So you had to let her run wild in the woods? Uh, for like 10 minutes, and then someone found us. Because <laughs> I, I live in the woods too, and there are a lot of fun animals to chase in the woods if you're a dog. Like squirrels and 
I don't know if Sadie likes squirrels, but they're very fascinating if you're a dog. I don't think he knows that he's breeder. He only thinks he's a squirrel. <laughs> Dogs change when they see squirrels. They turn into running beasts. When I say squirrel, I remember the zoo. He like looks out the window. Oh yeah. Yes. It's hilarious. I think it's funny. Lou. I have a comment. Yes. Yes, that sounds familiar. So all of you have a very good sense and idea and experiences of consequences. What about cause and effect? What was the effect of Icarus not listening to his father's warning and flying too close to the sun? So if we hearken back to our story, Let's go to Daedalus is the father, and he is very wise. He watches the birds. He sees how they fly. He starts collecting feathers. He designs these wings, and he makes one for his son. But if you look on, well, it's hard to say. It says Icarus. He made a set for his son Icarus, but warned him, don't fly too low or the sea will soak your feathers, don't fly too high, or the sun will melt your wax. So he was given, Icarus was given the warning. We see and read that he didn't follow it. What happened because he did not follow his father's warning? Did he have a joyful ending? No, it had a very it had a very stark and disastrous consequence. What happened? The strong the things to remember is the two W's in this case. We touched on this. If he got too close to the sun, it was going to melt. The what? Wax. Wax. If he got too close to the water, it would soak the feather. So really, what did Icarus have to do? He couldn't fly too what? Too low, or he could fly too. So all he really had to do is follow his dad and fly medium. But what did he do? He did not listen to his father. What did he do, Christian? He flew high and the wax melted and the um, wings um, fell off. Yeah. And where was it? What was he flying over? The sun? No, what? flying over. The sea? Yes. So the sea isn't a little body of water. It's a very large body of water. It's probably the Aegean Sea, which is very big large sea so you can't swim to the to the side of the ocean because he could have been miles and miles out yes em yes yeah that was a very big consequence too what happened when um eve ate the apple What's there with what? Sin. Yes. Paradise was no longer and sin entered the world because they, Adam and Eve didn't listen to who? Yeah. So major consequences. So let's do some sequencing and then we're going to put this away until tomorrow where we're going to work on it some more. So first thing that happened. Daedalus gets a job from who? Daedalus is a what? A doctor? A plumber? What is he? Cole. I have an answer and a comment. 
I need the answer first, please. Um, an, architect. an architect. And what is your comment? Um, that my mom was an architect. Oh, very cool. So, so is my husband. Um, so, architect. So the first thing he does is get a job from who? Daedalus gets a, gets a cell phone call from who? Well, not really, because they didn't have cell phones back in ancient Greece. Who contacted Daedalus about a job? When Sheen? The king. So that's the first thing that happened. All right, so he gets a job to build what? Or to design what? What is he going to design for the king? Everybody track. To design what? Just say it out loud. Palace. Palace. What is the next sequence of events? What do they do? So Daedalus accepts the job. Is he happy, excited? What is he, what, how does he feel about this? Okay, look at your, look at your picture, or your writing. It says Daedalus was, and took his son Icarus. So what was he? Overjoyed. Overjoyed. Does that mean he's happy? Yes. All right, the next, the next key component is he takes his son. What is his son's name? What is his son's name? Icarus. Just say it, please. Icarus. When my back is faced to you writing, then just say it out loud. All right, so he takes Icarus. He works very long. Does he finish the project? Yes. yes. Is the king happy? Yes. Yes. What? What's the oops that uh, Daedalus was not expecting? What was designed under the palace that was top secret. If you don't know, look at your story. We are following a sequencing and you need to pay attention. So the living quarters were luxurious. Everything was beautiful. The king expect, inspected it and he loved it. However, there was one little glitch. Something was built under the palace that was top secret. Emmy. The what? The maze, the labyrinth. So, all right, so top secret. What happens next? Because of the labyrinth and it's top secret, what happens to Icarus and Daedalus that they were not? expecting. Everybody look at the story and pay attention. We're at the labyrinth. Everything is was hunky-dory. They were going to pack to go home. Actually, I'm going to write that. They're packing. Now what happens? What did the king say? Oh, by the way, there's a slight change in the plan. When Sheen, they have to stay there. Why, with Sheen? They have to what? No, they don't have to guard the labyrinth. They want to keep the king wants to keep it secret, so Daedalus and Icarus have to stay there. They have lovely accommodations, but are they prisoners? Yes, yes they are. They have, it's not a normal prison, but they can't leave, so they're prisoners. 
So Daedalus and Icarus, prisoners. Now what? What does Daedalus start doing? Does he give up and fall into desperate despair and depression? What does he do? What does Daedalus do now? Look in your stories and look for the answer. And I want to see everybody responding because I keep getting the same hands up. So we are where at the story where Daedalus and Icarus find out that they can't leave. They have a wonderful house and a, a quarters above the tower, high in the tower, luxurious living space in the highest tower of the new palace. Fine foods, even servants. None of it, however, could replace their freedom or their home. So what does Daedalus do? What does he start watching? What does he start planning? Does he give up or does he start do something different, Helen? What does he do? That is correct. He's watching the birds fly. He's seeing how they use their wings. He collects their feathers. What does he do next? Luke. Um, he starts putting together wings. Yes. So what are the two key components of these wings? Owen. No, what are the wings made out of? Owen. Feathers from birds. And Olivia? Wax. Wax. Two very strong components to these wings. So what does the father say to his son Icarus? We've already talked about this, but what is the warning? Do not fly too high and do not fly too low. Why? Emma. If you fly high, then it gets too close to the sun, then the wax from the landing will start melting. That's right. And if he flew too low, what would happen, James? His wings would get wet. Yes, and the feathers would no longer work. So does he listen to the warning? No. no. He does not. It doesn't end well for Icarus. So the consequences we know, the sequencing we know, again, this is so important. When you take your test in the spring, this is the stuff that's going to be on it. You are going to be reading and you're going to be answering questions. So that is why, and it's just important. When you get to fourth grade, there's going to be more comprehension. And like I said before, on and on and on. This is crucial. You may think it seems redundant and boring, but it's important, okay? That's why I'm doing this with you.